What's going on guys, John Alder from Codemy.com and in this video, we're gonna look at variables in JavaScript. All right guys, like I said, in this video, we're gonna look at variables for JavaScript. But before we get started, if you like this video, want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with thousands of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime membership. It's all my courses, videos and books for one time fee, which is insanely cheap. Okay, in the last video, we talked a little bit about where JavaScript goes on a web page. And then we talked about it being in the head, being in the body, or being in some other file. In this video, I wanna to start to talk about variables. And there's all kinds of stuff we need to know about variables with JavaScript. In this video, we're gonna hit the basics. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor in the Get Bash Terminal, as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other videos in this JavaScript series. So check that out if you haven't so far. So I've got this file, I'm calling it variables.html. It's basically the code we had in the last video. I just got rid of some of the JavaScript stuff we did in the last video. So let's come down here. As always, we want our script tag, opening and closing. And before we start talking about variables, I wanna spend just a quick minute talking about white space, comments, and blocks, code blocks. So this, these two slashes, this is a comment. And anything I type here, this is a comment, does not appear on the web page, it doesn't appear in the code, it gets sort of grayed out, you can see. And comments are important in all programming languages, and they're just a way to put little comments in your code so that you or somebody else in the future who's looking at your code knows what you're doing in the code. You, they can read the comment and go, oh, they're about to do a variable or whatever. In JavaScript, you do two slashes like that. The other thing I wanna talk about is code blocks. So in JavaScript, you put code blocks, and we looked at this a little bit in the last video with a function in here and anything you type in here is part of the same code block. That's sort of important. We'll get into why that's important later on, a little bit in this video, but mostly later on. And finally, white space. JavaScript just ignores white space. A lot of programming languages do. Python is tab sensitive. You have to tab things over in certain ways in order for them to work. JavaScript just sort of ignores all white space. So, you know, in the last video, we had this block of code and it said, uh, my name is Bob we could have also done it like this, right? Without any spaces whatsoever, JavaScript totally ignores white space, right? So just sort of keep that in mind. So we'll leave that on there. We might use this later on in this video. So just a couple of quick little housekeeping things, comments, white space, and blocks, they're gonna be important. And uh, that's really all there is to it. In this video, mainly I wanna talk about variables. And variables are just a key fundamental part of all programming. Any computer programming language has variables. And a variable is just a box, it's a bucket. It's something you can put something in. So you might have words, strings, text. You may have numbers, you may have other objects, lists, arrays in JavaScript, all kinds of things you could put in a variable. In this video, we're just gonna keep it very simple and start out with text and numbers. So to create a variable in JavaScript, you declare it. Let's say declare a variable. And right away, this becomes complicated because there's three different ways you can, well, more than three, three main ways you can declare a variable in JavaScript. You can use the var keyword, you can use the let keyword, and you can use the const keyword. So these all let you create variables. And to create a variable, you just name it. So let's create one called first name. And then here we could say last name. And here we could say, I don't know, company. And we definitely do not want, <laughs> there we go. Const is the easiest one to understand. A constant is just constant. It does not change. So here we could say uh, codemy.com, right? Now this variable, like I said, it doesn't change. You can't change it, you can't update it later. It's constant, it stays the same. So very easy, const, let's say uh, const does not change. Constant, right, as the name implies. This other var is sort of deprecated, They'll, any book you read, any tutorial you read, I'll say, don't use var. You know, that went out the window in like 2015 or something. Use let. But the thing is, everybody still uses var. And the reason why you may choose var or let has to do with scope. So scope is sort of beyond the scope of this video. We'll talk about scope more in probably the next video. But scope depends on where in your program the thing is and where it can be used, right? So if you have a block of code and you only want that variable to be used in that block of code, remember we talked about blocks just a second ago, these curly brackets. If you have blocks and you only want your variable to be used in there, you would use let. 
the scope of let is very is much narrower. Var, on the other hand, is think of it more globally. It works pretty much everywhere, and that's good and that's bad. So if you have some code in a block and you only want the variable to be in that block, and then somewhere else in your code you named another variable with the same name, it would get overridden because the scope of var is global. And that's kind of a bad thing, or it may be a good thing, just depending on what you want to do. So they tell you not to use var. I don't know anyone that doesn't not use var. It's just sort of the default thing you're going to use for variables. You know, you're supposed to use let. Let's the thing to do from, you know, like I said, 2015, 2016 on, or maybe even earlier, 2006. I don't remember. Anyway, in this video, we're going to use both of them because you need to know these, especially with older code. If you're working for a company that has an old code base, there's going to be vars all over the place. So you need to understand what they are. So basically, they're just two different ways to declare a variable. So next, I want to talk about naming of the variable. Anytime you create a variable, you should name it descriptively. So if it's going to be a first name, it should be first name. You wouldn't call it var1, right? You could, but that would be stupid. You want to name it sort of what it's going to be. So in this case, uh, we could say John. So that makes sense. Here we could say Elder, because that's a last name. Notice here, I use double quotes here and single quotes here. Does not matter which one you use, you just have to be consistent. You can't do like a double quote and a single quote, that would be really kind of dumb. <laughs> you just need to be consistent in your statement. So that's another thing to keep in mind. Next, look at how I've named this physically. This is a lowercase f and an uppercase n. In computer programming, we call this camel case because it's sort of like has a hump in the middle of it. The uppercase n is a like a camel's hump. And JavaScript tends to use camel case when naming all variables. You know, in Python, you might name this thing like that. That's sort of what the Python people would do. And that works. And this works with JavaScript, but nobody does it that way. You always want to use camel case. That's what the cool kids do. So that's what you want to do. You definitely do not want to use the minus sign here, the hyphen, because JavaScript thinks this is subtraction. And it will try to subtract name from first, and you're going to get all kinds of errors. So definitely not a hyphen. You can use an underscore, but don't. Also, you can use a lowercase here, you know, first name, all lowercase. And again, it works, but the cool kids are going to make fun of you if you do that. So <laughs> you always want to use uppercase. So there we go. That's pretty much all we need to know at this point about variables. We could also create uh, numbers. So you'll notice here the strings are surrounded by quotation marks, either double quotation marks or single quotation marks. Numbers are not. Numbers in almost all programming languages are not surrounded by quotation marks. So those are variables. Super easy, super straightforward. And we're going to get into these more in more detail going further. And remember in the last video, we had this line of code that said, my name is Bob. And up here, it changed from my name is John Elder to my name is Bob. We could change this now using variables, right? And we can do that just by stringing along a plus sign. And we could say here, first name. And you notice this bopped it on another line. Again, JavaScript white space is ignored. So, you know, you could have it here. You could put it down here. This all works the same in JavaScript. So this should say my name is first name. If we go ahead and save this. This is variables.html. Head over to our web browser, run this thing in the web browser and see JavaScript variables. That's where I saved it. And now it says my name is John. Likewise, we could comment this out and do this again. But instead of saying my name is, let's just put my num. So if we save this, head back over to the browser, reload this guy, it just says 41, which is what we would sort of expect. But here, if we go now plus one, you know, before up here, we did my name is plus a variable, and it just concatenated it onto the string. Here, we're doing basically the same thing. But what's going to happen is if we hit reload, now it's going to say 42. Sometimes it does math, sometimes it smushes together what you have. So it just depends on the variable. In this case, this is a number. JavaScript knows it's a number because we didn't use quotation marks. And so instead of concatenating a number onto a number, it adds, it actually does the addition. And we'll talk about math in a future video. We can change that by changing this to a string. Just by putting this in quotation marks, it now becomes a string. Now, instead of it saying 42, if we save this and hit reload, it's going to be 411 because it's taken our original string 41 and it's just smushed, concatenated another one onto the end of it, just like it did when we said my name is John. 
it sort of smushed it together right here. It didn't try to add two strings with math. It just put them together. Same thing here because here we've changed this from a number to a string just by adding quotation marks around it. So those are variables. Again, don't get confused right now about var and let. We're going to get into these in greater detail going further when we learn more about scope. Scope probably needs its entire scope probably needs an entire video. And right now, especially if you're new to programming, you don't know what scope is and it's it's kind of confusing right off the bat. So we're just going to kind of ignore it for now and just sort of realize there's var, there's let, there's const. You'll use that sometimes if something can never change, but you know, for the most part, you're going to use var or let. If everything in the world tells you not to use var, all the tutorials, all the YouTube videos, take it kind of with a grain of salt because everybody uses var. <laughs> I still use var mostly because when I first learned JavaScript, var was the only one that existed. There was no let or const. Var was just what you used. So I've been using it, you know, for 20 years or something. And now they say, no, don't use var anymore. Eh, okay, we won't use var. We're still going to kind of use var. So that's a quick intro to variables. Again, don't overthink these quotation marks for strings, no quotation marks for numbers. And that's kind of all there is to it. So that's all for this video. If you liked, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime membership. So that's access to all my courses, over 60 courses, thousands of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 180,000 students to learn to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.